This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got another banger of a night across the NBA and NHL playoffs for tonight. Three games in the NBA, four in the NHL. We're going to break down all seven of those games here today by talking to Tom Avecchio, getting his read on those and letting you know where Tom sees value over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here as mentioned by Tom Vecchio. You can find Tom on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. He, of course, is hosting the Daily ISO, which is now wrapped up, but also hosting the solo shot every Monday and Tuesday on the FanDuel Research podcast feed, talking some MLB over there. Tom, pleasure to have you on for today. How you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, coming off an awesome weekend of sports, just action, uh, really from start to finish, uh, yesterday, all home teams in the NBA won, all home teams in the NHL won. Uh, so the chalk is hitting at least as of now, but that should obviously change moving forward uh, throughout the rest of this week. And how was your first weekend of uh, playoff hockey and basketball for you? It was good. I mean, Rangers won yesterday. I can't complain about that. Uh, they move on to Tuesday for game two. Uh, you know, kind of what I expected, a lot of lower scoring games. Abs, Jets had 13 goals, which is along the lines of what I expected, but that obviously uh, trickle down as the series goes on. All righty. We're going to break down all seven games on tap for tonight. Talking to Tom about his read on those and where he sees value over at FanDuel Sportsbook. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Because tomorrow, two episodes for tomorrow. Going to talk about Dinger Tuesday. Uh, myself here, talk about some MLB stuff. And then later on, Dr. Ed Feng will join us to talk about the NFL draft. All the draft show coming up on Thursday as well this week to get you ready for some last minute bets, last minute bets for the the NFL draft. A lot of good stuff coming up throughout the feed for this week and plenty of Tom throughout the next couple of weeks talking NBA and NHL as well. To get those as they are posted, make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find this show on the FanDuel YouTube page and on FanDuel TV+. Plus. The NBA playoffs are here and you can get it on the action at FanDuel Sportsbook to celebrate new customers on FanDuel can play their way into 150 bucks. Just place any $5 bet You'll get $150 in bonus bets, win or lose, to use during the NBA playoffs. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA, must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager, only $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call you under 327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. Or call one 870 hope Y or text hope Y in New York. Tom, let's start things off in the NBA, where the first game of the night is as the Cavs taking on the Magic. Right now, the Cavs are favored by 5.5 in this one. Cleveland pulled away in game number one. So, can the Magic fight back here in game number two? Uh, certainly an interesting game one, uh, lack of scoring specifically on the Orlando side of things, uh, you know, it, it, you know, partly can you say, is, is it the inexperience? As I mentioned, they're a, a super young team. Like this is their first step. They had a great year. I don't know if they win this game. And frankly, I don't think they win more than one game overall in the series. So I think there's going to be an easy spot for the Cavs. Maybe not tonight. I expect a little bit of better effort from the magic. So I think they cover, I'm not sure if they win and, what we saw from them in game one, like it, it was a really tough outing for them. They got out rebounded. They got a sh out shot. They basically got pushed around by the Cavs who are far more experienced team. 
So if I'm going anywhere in this game, it is going to be a rebounding prop from the Magic for Wendell Carter, only if he's in the starting lineup. The Magic ran a really small lineup out there to start game one, where they didn't have Mo Wagner or Wendell Carter in the starting lineup. And both Evan Mobley and Jared Allen, who I've talked about before and rebounding props for these two players throughout the season, they ended with 11 for Mobley and 18 rebounds for Jared Allen. Meanwhile, the player, two players tied for the high on the Magic were both at seven. So they have to do more of an effort to rebound the ball. And that means having a, a traditional center like Wendell Carter in the starting lineup. So I will be interested in Wendell Carter only if he's in the starting lineup because they have to put extra effort into limiting the second chances from the Cavs or it's going to be a repeat of game one and the series is going to be over in four or five games. Now, how much do you expect this number to move once starting lineups are announced? Like, what do you think is a fair number if we make the assumption, A, that this that he is starting, and B, that this number does move later on? I wouldn't be surprised if it stays at four and a half, but moves okay. to minus 140, okay. minus 145, because he only played 15 minutes in game one. Mm -hmm. Now, if, he, if that 15 minutes turns into 28 or 33, as we saw some of their starters go, he could certainly get there just based mm -hmm. on the time on the court. So if it gets to minus 140, I think that's where I would cut it off. Okay. I would not play it at five and a half. Even if it was five and a half at even money, I wouldn't play it at five and a half anywhere. Okay. So walking a thin line here with Wendell Carter, check the starting lineup once it's released uh, later on tonight. If Carter is in there, check out this prop. If it is still at four and a half, minus 128 on the over, Tom is okay with that. If it's minus 140 on the over, or if it gets to five and a half, that's where Tom says, no thanks for me. 76ers and Knicks is the second game right now. The Knicks favored by five in this one. Uh, let's take a look at this game, Tom, where we saw the Knicks pull away strong fourth quarter to beat the 76ers in game one. What's your read on game two here? Uh, my read on game two is that five is too many points. I like the 76ers. I also expect the Knicks to regress. And when we look at the Knicks overall, they shot 45% from deep in game one and 44% of their total shots made were from downtown. So they are being a very efficient from downtown. Also that just the percentage of, of two pointers to three pointers, that's not sustainable. So, and, and like you said, they had to, have their very strong fourth quarter to pull away. And they only won by seven points. So if we, you know, we've talked about three pointers before, if they are on the other side of variance for three pointers, right? This game's a lot close that uh, game one would have been a lot closer than we imagined. And frankly, they, the 76ers could have won that. So regression from the Knicks in terms of the volume of three pointers that they're shooting and making compared to two pointers. So I, I will take the five points with the 76ers, uh, you know, Embiid with the knee thing, going to the locker room as, as usual. A little bit of concern there because if Embiid doesn't play, I don't think the 76ers are a contender versus anyone. So I will take the five points with the, 70, with the 76ers. I would potentially also look to some unders on threes for the Knicks if I'm just expecting regression overall, but we'd have to dig a little bit more into that. Okay, so in general, expecting regression from the Knicks in this game based on how many threes they took in the first game, but also how efficient they were with those threes. But seeing value in the, the 76ers plus five, that is currently plus one, or minus one away to FanDuel Sportsbook, and then checking out some unders on the Knicks as far as three pointers made potentially as well for tonight. Final game in the NBA for tonight is the Lakers and the Nuggets. And the Nuggets predictably took care of business in the first game. Uh, they won that game by 11. Now favored by seven here. The spread is down a half point from where it was last night. So what stands out to you in this one, Tom? Uh, what stands out to me is coming off the heels of what we saw in game one, where the Lakers, after the first half, the Lakers got beat in every conceivable category. And they have to slow the game down. Denver in game one took 102 field goal attempts compared to the Lakers taking 79. Just the, the discrepancy in total possessions, the turnovers, obviously, in favor of the Nuggets, the rebounds in favor of the Nuggets, the offensive rebounds in favor of the Nuggets. So where does this lead me? It leads me to LeBron over seven and a half rebounds. It was at plus 100 uh, a little while ago. The updated line for that is, where are we looking for LeBron? Plus, uh, 110. plus 110. Don't love that. It's, <laughs> that it happened. Uh, plus 110 was plus 100. Uh, I would say shop for the best line available. Yeah. If you can find it elsewhere, maybe it moves throughout the day. 
But I think the Lakers need to make a very clear effort to take away possessions and slow the game down away from Denver. They also have to do a much better job in terms of handling the ball and on the defensive glass to prevent offensive rebounds from the Nuggets. So if we see a repeat of game one, again, the series is going to be over in four or five games. So I, the, LeBron has to do more. Anthony Davis has to do more on the glass to keep Jokic, Michael Porter Jr., and Aaron Gordon away from the rebounds. So when you're looking at this LeBron rebranding prop, again, at FanDuel Sportsbook, over 7.5 is currently plus 110. What do you think is a fair line there? You know, where do you think is the line that you – do you think it should be right now? I I'm, I would take 6.5 minus 150 for LeBron. If yeah. we could find that, I would certainly take there. But – it is obviously accurate. At, at this point, the, the line is refined so much. Yeah. Um, it, I, it's super thin. Like, the, these numbers have obviously been up since yesterday. It's not like they've just been right. posted this morning. So, you know, I saw this number uh, at first yesterday. It was at plus 100. I don't love the fact that it obviously moved the opposite way. Yeah. So I, I would say wait and see closer to tip if the lines change. That I mean, that's that's really the best we can do right now. Okay, so right now it's plus 110 for LeBron to get over 7.5 rebounds. Tom expects LeBron to play a bigger role in this game, given that they need this one pretty badly. So leaning on LeBron could lead to a lot of work on the glass for him as well. Let's talk about the NHL, Tom, where we have four games for tonight. But let's begin with the first two games. That is the Maple Leafs against the Bruins and the Islanders against the Hurricanes. When you check out those two games, Tom, any value stand out to you? So for the Maple Leafs, they got absolutely waxed in game one. And the only spot that I'll be looking in game two is for a shot prop solely depending on injury news uh, for the Leafs. So William Nylander, arguably their second best player, finished played all 82 games this regular season. Going into game 82, he had 98 total points. And there were some reports that he wanted to get to 100. He plays in game 82. Doesn't play in game one of the series. So something happened in the last game of the season when they had nothing to play for and he got hurt going for 100 points and now he doesn't play in game one. If there's, I haven't seen updated reports on whether he's playing in game two. So if he is out tonight, Tyler Bertuzzi right there at the bottom, Tyler Bertuzzi is a player that is going to see an increased role. He's up on the first forward line and the first power play. He moved to the first power play taking Nylander's spot. So if Nylander is back in, no interest in Bertuzzi. If Bertuzzi is still on the first power play, first forward line, the Leafs need the offense from someone else combined with the fact that they're already down in the series. They're already, they lost five, six, one, five, one in game one. So Bertuzzi has to fill the offensive void for their second best offensive player being out. It's, it's extremely straightforward. I will take the shot volume with Bertuzzi alongside Austin Matthews on that first forward line. And when would you expect to hear news about Nylander and whether or not he'll be able to play for tonight? Uh, it's, I mean, it could happen before lunchtime if they have morning yeah. skate tonight. And if okay. not, it'll happen. This game's at six ten, I believe it's not a seven o'clock start tonight. I think it's a six ten start. So it would happen at about five 30 when they do pregame, uh, lineup rushes. Okay. So check out the status of William Nylander. If Nylander cannot go turn to Tyler Bertuzzi over to an at shots. That's currently plus plus one thirty eight at FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, What's your point of being comfortable with that one if we assume that the number does inflate with the fact that if we assume Nealander gets ruled out? Like, are we talking, are you still okay, like plus 125? Where do you stand there? Uh, I mean, if it gets closer to even money, it's obviously, I mean, I wouldn't play it past plus 115. Like, okay, it's a playoffs. He's a good player. He's not a great player. He's filling a role. So it's an opportunity thing also based on desperation at this point. Right. So I wouldn't go much lower than plus 115. It also is worth noting that with unlimited overtime in the playoffs, uh, these markets are different than they are during the regular season. It's 60 minutes for the shot. So it only counts the first three periods for this market. So overtime, not a factor here. And make sure you are accounting for that because during the regular season, you can, you know, potentially account for that. So make sure you know this is a 60 minute market. It does not count if they go infinite overtimes. It's not going to matter for this Bertuzzi shot prop. Second game in that is uh, the Islanders and the Hurricanes. Anything you like in that one, Tom? So the Islanders actually played pretty solid in game one. They outshot the Canes, which was a bit surprising. Uh, When it comes to goal markets in the playoffs, I think it's tougher and tougher to take the quote-unquote best goal scorers. You know, as we saw yesterday, you know, with the Rangers, you know, two of their first three goals were from fourth liners, which is not something we'd ever, like, 
consider in the regular season a player that's seeing limited ice time and is on the first power play. So I don't I don't have a whole lot of interest in any of these shorter odds. The first player I would go to for the Islanders, considering they're down 0-1 in the series, is Brock Nelson for a goal at plus 280. He's a, a player that has routinely put up 25, 30 goals in a season. He's on the second forward line. He's on the first power play. He has a very solid offensive role overall. And, you know, as these numbers get longer and longer, that's where I have more and more interest for a player that would probably be around, I would say, 200, plus 200 on a normal regular season night. But as these odds get longer during the, the playoffs, and there's just more and more variance because the, you know, star players aren't producing at the same rate. I'll take a little bit of a longer shot for a player that's a proven goal scorer. Yeah, as you mentioned, that number right now at FanDuel Sportsbook is plus 280 on Brock Nelson. The other dy dynamic here is that there are fewer goals scored during the playoffs. So you're right. naturally going to get uh, longer odds in these things as well. But Nelson plus 280 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook to score a goal tonight. That is for the Islanders and the Hurricanes game. Second batch of games is the Golden Knights taking on the Stars and then the Kings taking on the Oilers. Let's begin thing with the with Vegas versus Dallas, Tom. What stands out to you in this one? Uh, Dallas, who's my Stanley Cup pick. Uh, going to Wyatt Johnson for Dallas over two and a half shots. It was sitting at minus 150 uh, last night. Wyatt Johnson is 20 years old. He's in his second season with Dallas. And you could say, you know, what kind of uh, experience does he have? 20 years old. He's playing in the second season. He played in all 19 playoff games with them last year. He has plenty of experience. He averaged 2.8 shots on goal in the playoffs just last season. He had 32 goals as a 20 year old. He's a proven young player. And again, Dallas as a favorite who, again, checks every single box we could possibly want in terms of forward depth, defense, goaltending. They are the favorites, you know, coming out of the West for a reason. I'll take a player, which I think the line is wrong. He averaged nearly three shots on goal last year when he's seeing solid forward time and power play time. This is his time to continue, uh, continue rolling on offense after a fantastic 30 goal season as a 20 year old. So I, I, I don't care about, uh, you know, a matchup in terms of this. The role is just too good to pass up, even if it's at minus 150. Yeah, it is at minus 150 right now at FanDuel Sports, but that's for Wyatt Johnston. Over two and a half shots, minus 150. That is for the Golden Knights versus the Stars. Tom expecting the Stars to have a lot of possession in this game because he expects the Stars to play pretty well in the series in general, but turning to Johnston specifically for that night. Other game, as mentioned, is the Kings and the Oilers. Uh, right now, the Oilers money line minus 166, Kings at plus 138. Total is five and a half over minus 124. What do you see in this one, Tom? Let's keep it super simple, and let's just go to a goal prop for Leon Dreisaitl for the Oilers. Plus 160. Hopefully, it's still at plus 160 for him. Plus 155. Plus 155. Totally fine there. Okay. These two teams played in the playoffs last year. Leon Dreisaitl had 11 points in six games in the playoffs last year. He had six points in four regular season games against the Kings. You know, I don't want to say, like, this is like a BVP thing where we, like, we buy into, like, the, the exact matchup. But, like, he dominates the Kings every time he's on the ice against them. It's just – that's just what it is. And when we look at these odds, as, you know, we just talked about Brock Nelson, like, the odds for goals in the playoffs are going to be different than that what we see in the regular season – so when Leon Dreisaitl sitting at plus 110 or plus one, you know, plus 105, sometimes minus 110 for a goal in the regular season when they play the Ducks or whatever, I'll take him at plus 155 in a match where he is, he's proven against these goalies that he has the upper hand. Now, again, whether we want to say it's like a small sample size, it's this, that, but a proven goal scorer who can hit 40 goals in a season at plus 155 is, a, is something that's frankly too good to pass up. All right. Uh, so that is currently plus 155 for Leon Dreisaitl for this Oilers versus Kings matchup. So a lot of stuff. Tom the scene for tonight that Dreisaitl won plus 155 for the Kings and the Oilers. Wyatt Johnson over two and a half shots minus 150. That's for the Stars and the Knights. Brock Nelson plus 280 for a goal in Islanders Hurricanes. Tyler Bertuzzi over two and a half shots plus 138 if William Nylander cannot go. So your viewing guide for tonight has been set. Love to hear yeah, uh, it, it should be an awesome night. And I love the fact that one of the games starts at six. So we can roll from the six o'clock, get into the NBA games at seven uh, and, and keep it rolling every day for the next two months. Love to hear it. That is Tom Vecchio. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Check him out on the, on the solo shot every Monday and Tuesday going forward. Talking about some MLB DFS. You can find today's show uh, over there on the FanDuel Research Podcast. But Tom, enjoy the time as always. Good luck and enjoy the games tonight. Thanks for having me.
All righty. We're going to talk about uh, recapping recommendations since last week here on the show to close things out. Let's start things off in the EPL where we had Austin Cass on to talk about some soccer, some EPL bets from this past week. The first one was Bournemouth to win or draw. That was minus 105. And the thought process there was Aston Villa was working with not a lot of rest. Uh, and they played a game Thursday. This market did move in our favor, but Bournemouth did wind up losing that game. So no win there for that one. And uh, unfortunately could not get the winner in that. Other one was a Mo Salah to score a goal uh, for the Liverpool matchup against Fulham. And Salah did not start. So if you were waiting to place that wager until the, the lineups were announced, hopefully you would have seen that Salah was not starting and now placed it. But Salah did enter the game. And it depends on the house rules for where you place a bet, whether they will accept that bet or not. So check your house rules uh, because some some books will rule it as no action if the player does not start, and some will have it as action if they play. And Salah did play in this match despite the fact he did not start. So um, check out your house rules. Always be aware of those because it will heavily influence things. And maybe that will influence where you want to bet certain, certain markets as well. But I uh, did not get that one with the Sala to score in the Liverpool versus Fulham matchup. For me, I had Formula One and NASCAR for last week. In Formula One, my lone bet was Lando Norris to podium. That was plus 230 at FanDuel Sportsbook. And Norris, I... <laughs> I kind of grew more pessimistic about this as the week went along because he seemed pessimistic. He actually kind of almost made a bet with his race engineer that he was going to finish behind the Ferraris. But Lando, very fast in the sprint qualifying when it was raining, uh, won the pole there, didn't run well during the sprint itself. But then qualifying for the actual race, he qualified for so put himself in a good position and then really good at managing his tires throughout the entire race. Had a couple of things break his way. And Norris finished second. So we are able to catch that one. Plus 230 for Lando Norris to podium. Good speed from the McLaren. Good tire management from Lando himself. So pretty impressed with him. And I think it was pretty cool to see the McLaren outrun the two Ferraris. Because it means that battle for the second manufacturer might be pretty good through this year uh, between Ferrari and McLaren. For NASCAR, I had Ford to win at plus 180 and Austin Cindric to win at 30 to 1. Uh, Cindric eventually became a value for a top 5 and a top 10 as well, but got caught up in that late crash on the last lap. The problem is, so did all the other Fords, because it was going to be either Michael McDowell or Brad Keselowski to win. Keselowski laid back, pushed McDowell forward, and gave him a lot of space. And that basically allowed Keselowski to get a huge run on McDowell. McDowell blocked it the first time, tried to block it a second time that's not going to work. And McDowell got wrecked. The problem was that Kedzalowski, I think, let off the gas or got slowed down in some way enough where Tyler Reddick passed him at the last second before the caution came out. So Reddick won in a Toyota, so couldn't get that there. Uh, neither Ford won, despite the fact they were running 1-2 on the final straightaway. So that was a bit of a bummer. Uh, so nothing in NASCAR between the Ford win, plus 180, and Cedric win to 30-1, to but did get the Lando Norris podium, plus 230 for Formula One in Shanghai. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Big thank you once again to Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio1. Again, he'll be with me or uh, filling in for me on the solo shot every Monday and Tuesday going forward if you want some MLB DFS and betting thoughts from Tom as well. I am on Twitter at Jim Saunas. You can find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. Tomorrow, as mentioned, two shows. Going to talk uh, MLB props on Tuesday morning to get your Dinger Tuesday started off right. And then we'll have Ed Fang on to talk NFL draft later on Tuesday as well. So make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Enjoy all the playoff action for tonight. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 